that primal early image of the mother beckons us to become howling infants once again. Yes, we lose consciousness and then we start behaving in all kinds of devastating ways. So what we're really fighting is the desire to fall into the dragon, to nurse at the dragon, to become a, a child once again, a dangerous child. And then we have the hero. And Jung says the hero represents the good, favorable action of the unconscious, while the dragon is its negative and unfavorable action. Not birth, but a devouring. Not a beneficial and constructive deed, but greedy retention and destruction. Our heroes have to face that challenge of early adulthood by facing those chaotic, primal, regressive tendencies of the unconscious. When we think of the mother, the mother, that's from the perspective of the infant. So, you know, we're born and we're just piles of howling instinct without any regulation, and we have to be helped and raised. But that first experience of the newborn infant to the mother is a realm of overwhelming instinct. And because those um, pre-verbal memories are still alive in all of us, that there is a beckoning, that that primal early image of the mother beckons us to become howling infants once again. Mm -hmm. So to defeat the mother is actually to defeat the attraction to wanting to collapse back into yes. that howling yes. state. Yes. This kind and of then, regression. Yes, we lose consciousness and then we start behaving in all kinds of illegal and devastating ways. So what we're really fighting, which is something to think about, is the desire to fall into the dragon, to nurse at the dragon, to become a, a child, once again, a dangerous child. And that's, that is what Jung basically says, is that when fighting the dragon, we are fighting the temptation to, to regress. You have some uh, good quotes there, don't you? Yeah, the, um, and so we have the dragon, the regression, or a symbol of regression, and then we have the hero. And Jung says the hero represents the good, favorable action of the unconscious, while the dragon is its negative and unfavorable action. Not birth, but a devouring. Not a beneficial and constructive deed, but greedy retention and destruction. And our heroes, and they're always uh, male heroes, um, are, uh, have to face that challenge of early adulthood um, by facing those chaotic, primal, regressive tendencies of the unconscious and to develop boldness and courage and stand against the, those forces of, of chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, just to kind of translate that, it's such a great, great quote, but to sort of translate it, say, you know, you have a young person who's uh, about to finish college and has no idea what he wants to do. He, you know, he doesn't have any plans. He doesn't have a job. And so the regressive tendency would maybe be to, you know, see if he could stay in college longer. Maybe he can, you know, engineer some way to add on an extra semester, for example. And, you know, the images of what he's going to do afterwards is like, well, maybe I'm going to move back home. And, and it's this, it's a, a kind of regressive, regressing back to a childlike state of dependence or staying in a childlike state instead of overcoming the fear. You know, Jung talks in, in volume five, he talks about fear a lot because what we have to do to face the dragon is overcome our fear. And, and in the battle with the dragon, um, this is another short quote from Jung, the hero has much in common with the dragon he fights, or, mm -hmm. or rather he takes over some of its qualities, invulnerability, snake's eyes, etc. So if you can fight the regressive tendency, um, it's empowering. 
And uh, there again, I think we see the opposites, and um, that one is is it looks like it's being defeated, but in the defeat, the hero absorbs some of those qualities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Becomes more dragon like. Exactly. Uh, uh, now you too can breathe fire. <laughs> so the example that you had given, Lisa, is um, a collapse into a kind of a passive dependency on the mother. Yes. yes. But also, depending on how far we regress, we also can regress to a more borderline state, which is a chaotic state, which is even more dangerous. And then we're in the world of the self-saboteur. Why is it that things are going well and something wells up in front inside of me and I have an impulse to say something that's going to create chaos or to be provocative in some way or to make infantile demands and to foster a kind of chaotic wildness in my relationship, at work, at school. And that's also this unfortunate regression to that very, very, very early state, which isn't as peaceful as wanting to play video games in the basement, but is actually much more terrifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the other side of the dragon is also, as we were saying, um, the dragons can have a protective aspect that in Hinduism, Naga is a uh, a central figure in Buddhism that is the protector of those who are in right relationship. She is, she is a goddess of water and fertility and the earth and wisdom, and she protects the treasures, material and spiritual. So I think later in life, once we have kind of differentiated from the seduction of the dragon, we can have a relationship with the unconscious, and the unconscious is also the source of creativity and treasures and instincts that can save your hide. Right, like if we know it's not going to devour us, then we can, we can harness ourselves to it in a way that's incredibly powerfully creative, which I think is part of the appeal of uh, shows like House of the Dragon, which was the kind of prequel to Game of Thrones, which... I really enjoyed, I have to say, I started off thinking, oh, you know, but then I, I really got into it and they do a lot with dragons and there's this wonderful image. And of course, this is in other popular books too, but they, they do this wonderful, uh, there's this wonderful thing where if you're uh, a Targaryen and you can speak, uh, what's the language, um, High Valerian or something, <laughs> you, you can... Um, you can sort of tame, a, you can bind a dragon to you, and then you become a dragon rider, and uh, it's, it's this really sp uh, stupendous thing, and there are these aerial fights and all these great uh, uh, special effects. You see these kinds of swooping beasts in the air, bellowing loudly. Uh, and it's, but it, it's a wonderful image, I think, of just what we were saying, that, that you know, with the right relationship, you could have access to the vast life energy of the unconscious, of the creative unconscious that the dragon represents. Right, and the thing that they say when they approach the dragon in that uh, television series is, serve me. Ah, okay. And ah, the dragon, that's it, great. A number of the situations, the dragon looks up, considers, and then belches flame. <laughs> <laughs> All over the person who asks. Yeah. It. Yes. But yes. if you're not the right kind yes, of uh, Targaryen, right it's not going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So this calls up for me, you know, what is um, the right relationship uh, to to dragons, to this aspect of the unconscious, and and just as in fairy tales. There are a number of ways to relate to dragons, but you have to go in consciously. You can't just walk up to a dragon and say, hey, uh, serve me. Mm -hmm. But uh, Joseph, you and I were talking about, there is a theme of befriending this way, where like horse and rider, the, yes. the hero um, 
you know, is the one directing the forces of the dragon, the unconscious. And we were talking about the sci-fi series by Anne McCaffrey of uh, the dragons of Pern and Mm -hmm. uh, the whole series that borrows from Conrad Lawrence, uh, Lawrence, L-O-R-E-N-Z, who discovered how uh, chicks imprint and that when the chicks hatch, the first thing they see is what they will follow and consider uh, their their guiding, more or less maternal force. And uh, it was such a wonderful scene of people gathering around all the dragon eggs hatching, and that when the dragons hatch, you simply stand there and wait for one of these little baby dragons. Mm-hmm. They're so cute to make eye contact with you and and bond. Uh, so it's an interesting image of a kind of primal bonding with a baby dragon that you can befriend. Mm-hmm. Big dangerous ducks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another way is you can trick the dragon. Uh, aside from the usual uh, heroic uh, sword piercing. Um, legends. There's a a story, um, I think, in the Bible or one of the Apocrypha of uh, Daniel and um, this idol, and it's a dragon. And uh, the way that Daniel kills the dragon is by feeding it cakes made of pitch and hair and fat. And our greedy dragon gulps them all down and um, then they explode in the dragon's stomach, which is a gloriously, um, really horrible, gory end to, to the dragon. So it, it calls up various ways of which dragon, what do I do, what are my options, how do I relate to this energy? Mm-hmm. 